Has everyone lost their mind? It's just a game of paintball. Yep, with one rule. Last man standing gets the prize. The prize. The prize. What is this prize? Back in the day, NBC had what some might call the final hurrah of the network sitcom. Yes, they still exist today, but they just don't reach the same level of cultural ubiquity. The network's Thursday night sported The Office, Parks and Rec, 30 Rock, and a little show called Community. Of the half-hour comedy television shows that became popular during this time period, regardless of network, Community was always something of a black sheep. It always took the road less traveled, it always attempted to accomplish something unconventional, even while existing in quite literally one of the most storied and traditional means of building a television show. A large portion of this attempted unconventionality can be attributed to the show's creator Dan Harmon. These days you probably know him for the other projects that, you know, make its way across everyone's television screens lately, like Rick and Morty. Up -up -up but the thing that sets Community apart from so many of the other shows attempting the highly commercial 30 minute sitcom structure is Harmon's unique blend of story structure rooted in the classical tradition and well as deeply idiosyncratic and offbeat interests. A quintessential example of this would be what just might well be the perfect episode of Community, season 1 episode 23, Honor Warfare. The episode sees our cast of Love of Misfits all competing together for the MacGuffin of priority registration, which is a fairly logical setup for a sitcom. How does this play out? The standard way would be to have two or more characters camping out in front of the registrar's office, sabotaging each other in ever increasingly over the top ways. A community, well, it isn't a standard show. It might have the structure of a classic sitcom, but it's interested in taking that road that's traveled. So, how do the characters compete here? A school wide paintball competition that's filmed like a serious action movie. Come with me if you don't want paint on your clothes. But before we delve too deeply into the specifics of this episode and what makes it fantastic, let's take a step back and examine why Dan Harmon wanted to create the show at all. At the time, Harmon based the concept for the show on his real life experience of taking a Spanish class at a community college. Duermo tarde, espanol, puro hora más, no rearme coche. He said repeatedly in interviews that when he first started the class, he did it specifically to try to save a relationship with an ex. However, what he really gained was strangely deep friendships with people from a variety of backgrounds that he normally would not have given a second thought to. This underlying kernel of an idea grew into what ultimately became community. Prior to his podcasting fame or Rick and Morty fuel success, Harmon was primarily known for distilling the Joseph Campbell's hero's journey into an easily comprehensible diagram. What is a story? Oh my god in heaven. Then Harmon's story circle is a very simple concept. It's an eight-part journey that Harmon chose to represent as a circle, starting with the character in their comfort zone, moving to them, developing a desire, entering an unfamiliar situation, adapting to that situation, ultimately getting what they need but paying a price for it, and then returning to their comfort zone, evolved as a person. Wow. You just wrinkled my brain, man. Modern Warfare is a perfect example of what both makes this structure work and also how community is different than every other sitcom in the way it uses said structure. But let's drill down. Modern Warfare, written by Emily Cutler and directed by Justin Lin, of Fast and Furious fame, by the way, is fantastic because it's filmed like an action movie, as already mentioned, but it's still rooted in the structure that we just talked about. <laughs> It takes its silliness seriously, while underneath being exactly what Harmon believes makes for a perfect story. Sure, it's all dumb, they're fighting with paintballs, but the fact that it's filmed seriously gives it a gravitas that, well, it'd be easier if we just move through the story of this particular episode, beat by beat, according to Harmon's story so far. The episode begins with a cold open that features the romantic pairing at the center of the first season, Greta and Jeff, arguing with each other. The group comments on their sexual tension, they brush it off, not wanting to admit they're secretly into each other. Oh, just like Sam and Diane. I hated Sam and Diane. Jeff, being the eternally selfish person he is, decides to take a nap in his car. He's in order to schedule he has, and how much time is wasted. When he wakes up, he learns that the whole school is devolved into near post-apocalyptic warfare, which then leads us to meeting up with Abed and Troy. Jeff Winger. You son of a bitch. He begins to take in the high concept of this world, that there are two roving bands of paintball-equipped students who all want the prize, that prize being again priority registration, to which he says, but you could schedule all your classes on a Monday and then take a six-day weekend. You can do a lot of things. Again, underscoring his selfishness and making clear his desires. From here, the episode escalates with our characters fully embracing the action movie mentality. We see the group dynamics play out over the course of the episode, with the students forming various alliances, breaking those alliances, and then we get these extremely well choreographed by scenes breaking everything up. Eventually it's revealed that Shirley wants the priority registration so that she can spend more time with her kids, which the other students realize is more important than their selfish desires except for Jeff, who still wants to keep it for himself. After brilliant Scarface and Die Hard parodies, and a slightly less brilliant mocking of Glee, eventually Jeff does get what he wants. He gets the priority registration, and also gets Britta. Over the course of the end of this episode, Britta and Jeff's tryst appears as a looming dread. The show seems to be aware that when you actually consummate a relationship, everything goes downhill, which the characters metatextually comment on. Something's changed. 
Oh, Abed. However, for now, it seems fine. Maybe. And in a final act, probably to assuage his guilt over the British situation, we finally move to that last beat when Jeff gives the priority registration to Shirley so she can spend more time with her boys. Wow, I didn't see that coming. Neither did I. So no one feels it? No one senses anything's different? Nope. Not at all. Modern Warfare exists in the class all its own. Yes, there are many sequels and rehashes of this idea later in Community. However, if you throw your mind back to 2009-ish, there just wasn't anything like this. Today, with streamers and increased artistic freedom for creators, high-concept episodes or gimmicky episodes of TV shows happen all the time. The problem is many of them forget that all of these gimmicks or bottle episodes or whatever structure you try to strangely throw something into, it doesn't matter if you're not establishing something that is concise from a story writing perspective. Community is a a proof in the pudding moment for Dan Harmon's way of structuring the story. And better yet, Modern Warfare is a full bowl of it. Community took an idea that could have been fairly run of the mill or a normal sitcom and transformed it into something different. Modern Warfare is a shiny example of comedic authorship performed in a vacuum of creative cowardice. Modern Warfare just isn't an episode that would have gotten made on any of the other three shows that NBC had at the time. It probably wouldn't have gotten made on any show other than Community. Because Harmon and the writers had faith in the ideas that grounded their ideas. Community is, of course, about a lovable band of misfits and rejects, which we've seen before. It's a fairly common trope in sitcoms, but it also feels like an artistic enterprise created by another gang of weirdos who somehow got their shot and decided to try things a little differently. There isn't another show that has an entire animated G.I. Joe parody episode or an entire episode that recreated the feeling of being in a pillow fort. Modern Warfare is not only the beginning of that ethos, which grows over the show's run, but the perfect example of that modus operandi. Be fearless in your ideas and flawless in your execution. And when your ideas get too big, don't drag them back down, find a way to chase them and catch back up to them. That, when done right, will always be funny. Pop, pop. Oh, no. <laughs> Today's episode is actually sponsored by Dr. Squatch. There's a lot of harmful chemicals that we get in these big soap companies. This is actually a company that I've known about for a while and one whose products I actually use. Dr. Squatch tries to get rid of all the bad of using soap, all the chemicals, the things that are supposed to be cleaning you, not making things worse. All their soaps are made with the best ingredients nature has to offer. Transparency of all their ingredients is right there. Look at the label, you'll see everything and you'll recognize it all. Hundreds of thousands of men are already subscribed to Dr. Squatch each and every month. And this whole idea is really changing the way men approach hygiene. By being more natural and by being healthier. I've used it, I love it. It's just nice to know that what you're putting on your body isn't, you know, destroying it. New customers can get 20% off on orders of $20 or more when they go to drsquatch.com and enter the code DSC Nerdstalgic. Again, new customers can get 20% off orders of $20 or more if you click the link in the description below or use that code DSC Nerdstalgic. Subscriptions are a new thing, but they're a really great thing. And in this case, they're healthy, they feel better to use, and you'll likely be happier knowing that what you're putting on your body, again, is Dr. Squatch and not something else. Well guys, that's it for today's episode. Or nostalgic. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button down below. Also, hit subscribe so you don't miss anything put out on this channel. And as always, two videos on your screen right now. You can check those out and stay here. Hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next video.